Living Legends, Profiles from the National Business Hall of Fame. Brought to you by Bell South. Everything you expect from a leader. Peter Lynch, the Wall Street wizard who transformed Fidelity's Magellan Fund, believes in buying stock in companies easily understood by the average consumer. His method of spotting small, well-run and growing businesses led him to invest in Haynes Hosiery and Dunkin' Donuts. Since 1977, Lynch's Magellan Fund returned 2,470% as compared to a return of little better than 500% in Standard & Poor's 500 stock index. What you do is basically you look for companies that have something unique. Like an example would be Toys R Us when I first found that. You know, they, they only were in, they only had seven or eight stores. You said to yourself, they could, this concept could have two or three hundred stores. Now, by nature, some of those companies might be very boring. Well, yeah, that's terrific. I look for, that's great. Companies that are boring are wonderful for me. I've done well with companies like Dunkin' Donuts. Well, companies like that, they're very easy to understand. No one's going to invent a better donut somewhere at MIT. You don't have to worry about How do you analyze imports. a Dunkin' Donuts uh, company? Well, well, there's a company that upgraded their stores. They spent a lot of time on on the quality of their product. They really spent a lot of time to have a china cup. Their cup was worth over a dollar. Instead of just having a piece of paper or a plastic cup, they said, we want to deliver something very good to the consumer. They really worked on the quality of their coffee. You know, they'd, Every 15 minutes, they'd throw it away, and they'd, they'd cook it within three degrees of the right temperature. They really cared about all Did you find that in those. an annual report? No, you had to go visit them and talk to them. But you could find it out. You'd say, this is something that really makes sense. And the nice thing about it is, if somebody comes up with a good donut system, and they really have a great concept that's in the state of Washington, it's not going to affect Dunkin' Donuts if they're located in Virginia, if they're located in Massachusetts. Now, how did you stumble on legs? This is a product my wife said you know, worked very good. And at that point in time, I, I did a little bit of research, and I found out the average woman goes to the supermarket about twice a week. And all the hosiery being sold in the supermarket was just junk. So here's a company that made a good product put it into the supermarkets, put it into the drugstores, made it readily available. It was an incredible success. It was the most successful product of the 1970s after Pampers. But Pampers was part of a very big company called Procter & Gamble. This is part of a relatively small company called Haynes. So the stock was a huge success. It was eventually bought out by Consolidated Foods, a company who's now called Sara Lee. If it wasn't bought out, I think it you know, would have been a 100-bagger instead of just a 10-bagger. It was a big success. At what point do you decide in a company to cut your losses? It's only if the company's doing poorly. If, if you bought a company because you thought this new product was going to work, or the aluminum industry was turning around and you know something about the aluminum industry, if all of a sudden the product isn't working or the industry's getting worse, if you're wrong in the fundamentals, then you sell. If the company's doing fine and the stock goes down, that's a great opportunity. Tomorrow, Lynch's Guide to Picking Stocks.